President Trump's going to visit Wisconsin today. Uh, he's expected to push a trade deal with Canada and Mexico and, uh, and also talk about the uh, defense industry. It says tout, tout the defense industry. Uh, it's kind of got some editorial connotation, I think. For more, uh, let's welcome Peter Navarro. He's assistant to the president and director of the Office of Trade and Manufacturing uh, Policy. And it's great to see you. It's been a while, uh, Peter. Hey, Joe, last time we talked, uh, you were on the lawn here of the White House. And uh, I don't want to tout what's happening today, but I, I do want to talk about, I think, one of the unsung heroes of the Trump uh, economic boom, and that's the president's fine attention to detail to the defense industrial base. Uh, we're going to Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to Milwaukee. We're going to visit a company called Deerco, which is a subsidiary Lockheed Martin. Um, it's got a, about 300 employees. They're increasing their employment, 1,200 suppliers. Basically, they're an integral part of the supply chain, both for defense and commercial. They service things like the uh, Black Hawk helicopter on the military side. Uh, Boeing 777. And uh, throughout the state of Wisconsin, if you look at Oshkosh Defense, uh, builds combat vehicles in Oshkosh. Uh, up in Marinette, the president uh, and his defense budget played a key role in saving that shipyard, so it's building a littoral combat ship. Um, just, just a few days ago, uh, the president announced that Coatesville, uh, the facility there, which builds, among other things, the Marine One helicopter, uh, is going to stay open. And, and, and this was a great example, Joe, of something uh, I don't think any modern president has done, which is to actively engage with uh, corporate executives uh, to figure out a way uh, to keep uh, jobs uh, in America and keep, keep them strong. And so when Coatesville was announced to close, um, the president uh, had uh, some discussions with Marilyn Houston, who will be there today, one of the great CEOs in this country, of Lockheed. Uh, and so um, all of these things uh, in the defense industrial base, supply chain, are creating uh, great jobs. Uh, the banner that the president uh, runs under on this is what we call economic security is national security. So when we're creating jobs in Oshkosh or Marinette or Milwaukee uh, or Greenville, South Carolina with the F-16 yep. or Lima, Ohio uh, with the tanks, uh, we're not only uh, protecting this country, but we're creating good jobs does, and good wages. Does Secretary Mnuchin ever come to you and say, look, I, I understand the guns and butter uh, arguments. Uh, the, the president has, has refortified our defense industry, obviously, which, which probably needed it. But the, the usually friendly Drudge Report, the headline, federal spending smashes records, budget deficit widens to 23 percent. Something's got to give. Peter, jobs are great. Defense industry is great. Where, where, where are you going to, to try to rein things in to allow for this increase in, in the defense budget? So, so what's not going to give is, is the defense budget. As you know, Joe, uh, the uh, oh, Biden years uh, were the years of sequestration uh, on the defense budget. We had radical cuts uh, in defense. And the problem with that is there are a lot of companies in America whose only uh, customer is uh, the U.S. government. And so when they face these radical cuts, uh, they go out of business and we lose skilled craftsmen, whether it's in shipbuilding or aircraft or nuclear, whatever it is. Um, it's very important to this president uh, to have uh, a strong defense. Okay. Uh, he was able to get a, 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 a historic increase in the defense budget to make up for all we lost. So that's what I focus on, Joe. Manufacturing okay. and defense industrial yeah, that's, base. That's, that's, probably Mnuchin's, like, good. Mnuchin's pulling his hair out with, with maybe the budget department. Let me, this is going to kick off a USMCA. Ne never seen Steve pull his hair out. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, no, just it, for the record. Good to have seen it. Seen him do it's, different things, but never that. Tell me about it. Uh, hair is so important. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> Peter, the USMCA, uh, let's talk about that. And, and sure. I'll, I'll tell you how I'm going to ask this. Um, you saw what it took to get... Um, Speaker Pelosi to to go ahead with that, you know, to even uh, go along with the Senate, which was much more, um, con you know, they, they were on the same page for, for the border, uh, you know, to, to try and help out down there. What makes you think, I mean, she's going to be dragged kicking and screaming to, to USMCA. I don't see any way she's going to want to give President Trump a win on the USMCA after how hard it was just to get the $4 billion for uh, you know, for, for help down there. 
So, so I see two things on the Hill as kind of sui generis, as bipartisan. One is on our China policy, there's very strong bipartisan support for our China policy on the Hill, as there is in the general public. I think the same thing exists for the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. If you simply run through the numbers, the whole point of, of the USMCA is to bring back our manufacturing base and our supply chain using these rules of origin, strengthened rules of origin, coupled with things Democrats like a lot, which is strong protections for labor and the environment. And I, I think that... Um, That'll do it, huh? Well... It's taken a while. <laughs> I think, I think um, Ambassador Lighthizer is, is, is actively engaged with the Democrats to uh, satisfy them on the enforcement issues, which is what they've raised. Uh, I think if this were to go to a floor vote, both sides uh, uh, of, of Capitol Hill, Senate and House, would pass it by overwhelming majorities. Really? So the fact is that this deal is good for just about it, well, for every state. Um, and it's for farmers, it's for ranchers, manufacturers, yep. workers. So uh, I hope this doesn't get uh, uh, go down the sinkhole of partisanship. The uh, there's been good discussions with Ambassador Lighthizer and the Democrats. Let's see what happens. As closer we get to the election, I, I, I don't know. I don't see it. Uh, to get, I, that would be a big I, I win. That would be a big that. win for but, President but Trump. Every once in a while, Joe, uh, Congress rises above itself and does the right not thing. Not recently. This could be the, uh, well, this is so important to our economy, Joe. I mean, it affects literally everybody in this country. Uh, you know, the giant right. sucking sound of NAFTA going back to 1994 was a disaster not only economically but also from an immigration point of view. Okay. President is committed uh, to getting rid of NAFTA. This he's done his job. Let's be clear about this. He promised in June of 2016 that he would re, uh, renegotiate the worst trade deal besides the China deal that we've ever negotiated. He's done his job. He's brought to Capitol Hill the smartest, biggest, most intelligent deal, and he's got the best trade representative in U.S. history basically is the tip of his spear in Robert Lighthizer, who has very good relations with both sides of the aisle. So right. let's be optimistic for your investors. Uh, Joe, if we get USMCA passed, if we get a rate cut in yep. Jay Powell, uh, we're over 30,000 on the Dow, and this market continues, this economy continues strong. Let's just switch to China quickly, then I'll let, sure. let, let Melissa in too. But uh, there is a, a report out from DHL. Just This is just one anecdotal data point, uh, Peter, about global trade is starting uh, to slow. Uh, is, does it get to the point where both sides are, uh, are, are in too much pain to, to continue and, and we get some kind of half deal done with China? Are we, and also the election plays into this uh, as well as we get closer to 2020. Or are you going to hold out for something that's really significant? And will you be able to? So uh, we are, in, in my judgment, in a quiet period, the equivalent of a quiet period for the negotiations. What's happening is Ambassador Lighthizer has talked directly by phone with Leo He, who's the, his counterpart. Uh, he was at the Bilad in Osaka sitting right next to President Xi. Um, there's been, there was a strong commitment at the Bilad to uh, fully engage. Um, Ambassador Lighthizer is going to go to Beijing with the Treasury Secretary in the very near future, and we're going to have constructive uh, talks uh, to deal with these significant structural issues. My advice for investors is, is to be, uh, be patient with this process. Uh, don't believe anything you read in either the Chinese or the U.S. press about these negotiations unless it comes from the mouths of either the president or Ambassador Lighthizer. I saw this movie before coming out of Buenos Aires in December 2018. For months and months and months, there was just all sorts of stories written uh, that were designed to, to, to shape the negotiations, but they really didn't have any insight into them. So uh, be patient, and I, from an investor's point of view, uh, the big prize now is the rate cut, USMCA, and the fact that uh, this economy is hitting on all cylinders. Record unemployment uh, rates for blacks, Hispanics, women overall. We've got rising wages, particularly for blue collar workers. We've added uh, uh, five million jobs since the president's been elected, half a million manufacturing jobs compared to the o Biden years when they lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. So as the director of the Office of Trade Manufacturing Policy, I couldn't be more pleased with the president's policies, creating 
good manufacturing jobs. And to bring it back to this mm -hmm. defense industrial base, a lot of that um, is being facilitated by uh, F-16 production in, in Greenville, tank production in Lima, Ohio, shipbuilding in Marinette, and sure. things like that. So it's going to be a great trip today uh, to Milwaukee to see the president um, uh, talk to a key cons constituency there in the defense industrial base as he uh, talks about uh, the USMCA. And don't forget the dairy farmers in Wisconsin right. who right. he's coming so to the Peter rescue of. Yes, Peter, speaking of Wisconsin, speaking of manufacturing jobs, I wanted to ask you about Foxconn and what appears to be so far a failed promise to build its factory, which it promised a year ago to be a $10 billion factory, uh, employing tens of thousands of people. At the groundbreaking ceremony, President Trump said it would be the eighth wonder of the world, and so far nothing has happened, even though the uh, state I, has, I, I, has I'm spent... I'm not sure where you're getting that information. I mean, I've talked directly... Okay. Uh, uh, with the Foxconn folks, uh -huh. I've had them in my office. They've shown me the plans. Uh, they, they are hiring construction people. They are committed uh, to their timeline. So, um, as far as I know, it's a vastly scaled down manufacturing plant. I wouldn't call it vastly scaled down at all. Uh, okay. it, you have you have several types of facilities on the campus. Uh, we're actively trying to include other parts of the supply chain on there. The, the project, uh, as far as uh, we see it so far is is vibrant, and they're committed to doing Are it. Are they and, fulfilling and all moving. the promises they made a year ago? Made a year ago? I, you'd have to li list me the promises. What I'm telling you here is that your description of this, as you led this off, uh, is counter to the reality I know, and I assure you that the White House is actively engaged with the Foxconn team uh, to make sure that that we move forward and, and help them with any obstacles they might face in getting it. I'm, this president. This is the beauty of this president. Every morning he wakes up trying to figure out uh, how to put men and women to work, particularly those who work with their hands, uh, whether it's calling a, a CEO to make sure Coatesville, Pennsylvania uh, stays open or, or whether, he's, he, whether he's just committed uh, to, to uh, having rate cuts, go, uh, rate cuts. This is what the president does. He's all about creating good jobs for America, securing our borders with a merit-based uh, system, and uh, having a national security policy that doesn't involve us uh, in big foreign wars. I will simply, Peter, quote the uh, governor of Wisconsin, Tony Evers. Not a who friend of ours, by the way. He's going out of his way on a partisan basis sure. to attack us, and I think oh, that's okay. counterproductive for the state of he, Wisconsin. He simply said he that the manufacturing complex that. plant in Wisconsin is likely to continue falling short of the threshold required to begin receiving billions of dollars in state incentives, even after production begins next year. Yeah, I've, I've seen uh, I've seen the rhetoric there. Uh, he's not so that's he's not fake. a friend of ours, False. and he's not a friend friend of the project. Uh, but I think that works counter to the interests of the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin is booming under the policies of Donald J. Trump. I toured there uh, about six weeks ago, I think, with one of the great uh, congressmen in this country, Sean Duffy. Uh, you know, we went with the Warsaw, Oshkosh. Uh, we went up to Marinette and down to Milwaukee, and we saw all points of that compass. Uh, that's, that's a state that, that is vibrant, much like the rest of this country. In fact, I, I don't know where it's not booming in this country. We, I wish we had I, as much time as we could possibly have, Peter. I just, I mean, I don't know. But if you got a way to thread the needle with Huawei, where we protect the, you know, we don't want, we don't want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Good question, Joe. I think we're threading that needle beautifully. Uh, basically, uh, the 5G we're going to build here, we're going to build it without Huawei. That's clear. We're going to lead that. President Trump is committed to being the leader on 5G. So take that out of the equation. Uh, they're staying on what's called the entities list, which means that they won't be buying anything that has any national security implications mm -hmm. at all. The only thing that Secretary Ross is going to uh, allow to be uh, sold to Huawei are things that they could buy from other vendors worldwide. And so uh, if we don't have that kind of policy, we're harming our own American companies. So we're threading that needle beautifully, and um, it, it's a relatively small amount of sales. In a neighborhood of uh, less than a billion dollars, which is small in the scheme of things. Uh, we know that Huawei is a significant threat to our national security, uh, and uh, they are not going to uh, take 5G here in this country. That, that's just not going to happen. You've got to, if you had to bet money, when, when is a, uh, something, money? A, something actually signed? <laughs> I can't do that. I'm in the White House now. You something know? actually signed between, the, between China and, and the U.S. So, uh, quiet period, Joe. Patience. Uh, Patience let Bob, is a virtue. Bob Lighthizer and Donald J. Trump 
uh, take the lead on this. I, I, I want to stress, Joe, this is really important. There's just going to be a lot of garbage coming out in the Wall Street Journal and the People's Daily and everything in between. I saw this movie before. Don't believe anything you read unless it comes from the mouth of Robert Lighthizer or President Trump. Okay. Peter Navarro, uh, we thank you. Uh, it's all good, Joe. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Bullish, baby.